Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to Money Mondays. We're going to do something a little different today. We're going to talk about side gigs and how you can create one. From the looking at it from a very, very high level, without getting into the nitty gritty, but just understanding the overall structure or format of the things that you can undertake in order to create a side business. So let's go ahead and jump straight in. I will share my screen just now. There we are. Money Monday is starting a side gig. So this, as I say, is a very high level overview of the steps that one needs in order to create their own side business online. Some of the things that I'm going to talk about today are shattering the illusions, the misconceptions and laying out the path in front of you. Don't get me wrong, when we get right down into the nitty gritty, there's a lot of skills and a lot of understanding that you need in order to execute each individual part. But as I say, at least this will illuminate the path or the steps that you can use in order to create your own business online because having a side gig or having a side hustle is a little bit of a buzzword. These days, uh, I definitely know there's a lot of people specifically in dentistry who would like to diversify a little bit. These are the things that you can use in order to understand the path to proceed or at least a path to proceed because for me at the beginning, I had no idea where to start and for me, I never really actually intended to set out to create something that I could call a business uh, or something that could evolve into some sort of product for people. But now that I look back on it, I realize with a new pair of eyes, I realize in hindsight what I did and how that worked. But I never really gained that insight until very recently, until I started reading books on online traffic such as Russell Brunson's Traffic Secrets series which I really like and I definitely recommend that book to everybody and when I was reading it I saw my own journey just laid out there in front of me and I had no idea what I was <laughs> creating at the time I just made a Facebook group and then uh, <laughs> yeah things evolved from there but yeah it's an interesting one I definitely recommend that book to everybody and you'll see a little bit of this webinar is inspired by that book as well not financial advice we're not strictly speaking talking about money today we're talking more about uh well, sorry we're not strictly speaking talking about investing I should say we're talking more about business today okay cool so why is side business why is it such a buzzword these days I feel like it's something a little cool it's a little sexy uh I definitely feel like the internet has not reached peak mass just yet it's not reached supernova status i still think there's millions hundreds of thousands of opportunities on there even though we've been we've been in the internet era for 20 25 years now it's still growing it's still maturing there's still things out there that you can create the very first thing to understand is as soon as you can get attention on the internet if you can create something that people interact with and find useful then at that point you have something that can be a business there in the making. So think about it from the from that perspective. Think to yourself, actually, if I can get attention first, if I can create something interesting for people, actually, I don't even really need to worry about how I'm going to make a business because that we can figure out along the way. Get the attention first. But remember to do that. There's quite a lot of skills in that process. And you have to be someone who genuinely wants to help those people and genuinely has a passion for what you're talking about. But the first step is to figure out what that passion is. Cool. So why a side business? First of all, it's another dimension to life. There's so many things that I didn't realize about the world until I started my Facebook group. Um, I definitely think it's fair to say I was living life with blinkers on. Um, I thought you could only really exchange time for money. I mean, obviously there was the investing on the side, but that takes a long time to grow your wealth realistically because there's a lot of volatility in the short term more so with investing it's compounding your wealth in the long run how to actually create wealth and pull pull that wealth forwards in the short term i thought that that was just about having a nine to five job i didn't really think that there was any other way you could do that that was definitely a huge illusion that was shattered for me something wrapped around your passion what is better than being able to monetize something that you absolutely love that you would do for free i can i think that's one of the hugest perks about it. Supplemental income, of course, and the gateway to excitement, the gateway to fun, the gateway to enjoying every single moment of your life. The key thing to understand is 
that if you can create a business, if you can create something around something that you'd be doing for free anyway, then isn't that the ultimate dream? Imagine if you can get paid for something that you would do otherwise. That to me is awesome. And I also think as well that for people who want to go down the side business route, because of the number of hours that you have to put in to actually get the thing off the ground and keep it running consistently, it has to be a passion. It's not an option for it to be something that drains you or you don't like. There's two things in life. There's things that give you energy and there's things that take energy. Whatever your side business is centered around, it has to be something that gives you energy, something that excites you because the more energy you put in, the more energy you get out. Whereas if the opposite is true, you'll never have the stamina to actually create the thing, see it through, execute it and grow it, particularly from the other side that I've seen. You know, there really is no limit to how much work you can put in 13, 14 hours a day totally normal in fact almost every day so if that is not something that you can feel that you can bring that level of dedication to i've got serious concerns that it might ever be able to ever be something that we can get off the ground in the first place so it has to be a passion it has to be something that excites you here's the first thing to understand i love this picture the success iceberg this is all the stuff that you see underneath and it's flipping crazy you have to be completely built differently. You have to be mentally so robust. You have to be a different breed of human being. Um, you have to evolve a lot as a person in order to become the individual who's happy to do that. Um, for me, I definitely had to grow a lot. I had to change, um, you know, I always felt like I'm fundamentally the same person. I was all, always really excited about investing in crypto, all of those things. It was always something that I find absolutely fascinating. Read quite well, read loads of books on the subject, something that I did without any idea that it would ever become dent to soon invest or would ever become anything special. I just did it on the side around my job. Um, and really I'm super passionate about books. Books are the, the tool through which you can generate freedom. If you read five books on a subject, chances are you know more than 99.9% .9 of society at that stage, you know, on that particular subject. And therefore you've got a lot of knowledge to give that can help people. So for me, that's the gateway, that's the path is educating yourself on anything. And then what that means at that point is you can take that knowledge and give it to others, which is an unbelievable thing. You know, I really like, I really admire Elon Musk and what he's done. The guy taught himself rocket science just from reading books about it. And now he owns SpaceX, flipping insane, you know? Um, so yeah, fair play. Uh, anyone can learn anything. You can never, it's never too late for us to go and learn about a complete new body of knowledge. And it's how that combines with your current body of knowledge that makes you unique and makes you able to serve people within your profession with another, with another field that combines in a way that only you can, you can, you can offer combines in a way that only you can bring that you can particularly do, you can, you can bring those two subjects together in a way that no one else can, because you've experienced both fields and that's what makes you unique. And then that's what makes your value proposition to your profession, to that group of people, unbelievable, but don't get me wrong. These are all the things underneath the surface. These are all the qualities that you need. And for me, that was one of the biggest shocks. It's just, you, you need to be built differently to be able to get it off the ground. But for me, it's all worth it. It's all worth it. Particularly when you can live a life that's true to yourself and no limits and do something that you flip in love, worth it all day long. And also the freedom it gives you is crazy. Comfort zone. Siri, <laughs> everybody goes through this. This is normal. This is the thing that you've got to bust through big time. Remember, if this was easy, everyone would do it. So when you're doing it, when you feel that fear kicking in, in the back of your head, when you feel that worry, when you feel that concern, imposter syndrome, all of those things, those are the things that hold people back. I genuinely believe success in life is more about who you are, is, def is purely defined in who you are as a person. And if you have the mental toolkit to be able to bust through those obstacles, you're a flipping demon. And what that will mean is that you'll always be someone who's an entrepreneur, no matter what. And when you live that life for, a certain amount of time, you'll find it really hard to go back to a nine to five job. You know, there's a thing about entrepreneurs where with time they become unemployable and that's not because no one will hire them. It's just because they can't do it. They can't physically do it because they've seen how good life can be and they understand that the self-employed lifestyle is for them and that's what makes them happy. And I want everyone to be that happy. I want everybody to experience that dimension of life because for me, I think it's awesome. And I, I, would, I would really struggle to go back to nine to five um, given that 
when you bust through and you create something that you love, it's an outlet for your creativity. It's an outlet for you to talk about something that you love and make it into uh, an income stream. And for me, that is just so cool and help a lot of people. The main thing is, if you want to create something, just think to yourself, is this product something that I would reasonably use? Does this solve a problem? And if the answer is yes, you'll be able to throw everything you have behind it because you'll believe in the product so, so, so flipping much. And then that's the level of dedication and passion you need to be able to push through your comfort zone and create a business. But the question is how you find that, of course, which we're coming on to shortly. In essence, business at its simplest form is, is nothing more than money in, <laughs> sorry, business in its simplest form is more money in than out. Obviously, that is reducing it to a very, very, very simple, simple paradigm. There is more to it than that, naturally. Um, but I feel like if we want to just view it from a high level, at least at the very start, if you've got a business that's profitable, there's more money going in and money going out. And then what that means for you is that actually you've began. And the, the thing about it is for me, instead of spending all this time thinking about what happens when we get to that point, taxes, business, et cetera, all of those things, then isn't that just analysis paralysis? You know, for me, it's just about beginning. And that's a huge thing in the pathway of the entrepreneur as well, that you're an executor rather than a thinker. Your ideas are multiplied by your execution. If your ideas are there, but the execution is zero, the answer is always, the sum total is always going to be zero. So it's about execution. But of course, you've got to be careful as well. You can't just jump in at the deep end. Um, you know, it's something potentially risky. You've got to use your nose a little bit. You've got to use your intuition. But I definitely feel like people overcomplicate things a lot of the time. A business, in essence, is a mechanism via which value is transferred. To create value, invest in yourself and use the business as a means to transact with that value. Interesting way of thinking about it. That's all a business is, is value transfer. The value that someone is giving you is tied up in currency. Value equals money. That's all it is. Currency is just physical value, a physical representation of value. And value is something that can be, that is psychological. It is something that is subjective to every single human being. And your ability is to convey the value of your product to other people. Your, your business is your ability to convey the value of your product to other people, but also creating the cool product in the first place. Setting up a business does not always require a lot of capital. In fact, I, I think this is a total illusion that anybody thinks that they need a significant amount of capital. You know, a laptop, a microphone, some content, some books that you've read on something, generating a following. Don't get me wrong, it's not easy. It's not something that you can do overnight. It's not something that you can do uh, overnight uh, because obviously it takes a lot of dedication. If there was the ability for anybody to do this then everybody would have it, always remember yourself, always remember to yourself that that's the reason, that's, that's, it's part and parcel of the journey. That's the reason why. And when you feel like that, that's always remember, this is the point that most people quit. And if we ever, if we want to have the same things as everybody else, we've got to do the same, we've got to perform the same actions. If we want different things, we've got to do different stuff. We've got to react in different ways. A good rule of thumb is if you feel a certain emotion hitting you is when you, you know, imposter syndrome or anything that happens along, along the, along the process of having a business, if you feel a certain emotion hit you, just like in investing, it's probably the time to pause and think to yourself, is this emotion the way most people would react at this point? And if you judge that to be the case, then it's usually a good point to pause and think, and maybe even sometimes do the opposite. Because remember, as I say, the whole reason that most people are unable to do this is because they react the same as most people. So we got to react differently. We got to pause and think, and we got to think to ourselves, actually, if I do this, Am I actually staying within my comfort zone? Is this the reason why my business is not going to be successful? It's just an interesting way to think um, about, uh, well, those emotions that hit you, which do for everybody throughout the process. And then what that means is you get more self-awareness, more insight. And it's not always true, but it's just a good rule of thumb or certainly some insight that you can use. First thing to understand, you need traffic. What do I mean by traffic? I don't mean cars. I mean, potential customers. 
And I actually think this is the thing that lots of people get wrong. They try to create the product, then find the traffic. Why not get the traffic and then create the product? You can actually do it that way because what that means is you can actually create a better product sometimes because you have the traffic, because you'll understand what those people actually want. Interesting. How do you get traffic? The conventional way is to create a product or service that attracts traffic. The other way you can do it is leverage a real world network of people. If you know thousands of people personally, then you will be able to create a product for them. Totally possible. But rare is the person that knows that many people. Create a following around something that you love. This is the third way you can get traffic. And these are actually in a particular order. They're actually descending, hardest at the top, easiest at the bottom. None of them are easy, but this is the easiest way at the bottom, in my opinion, is to create a following and then create a product around it. Maybe some sort of knowledge based product that you can use to help those people to help them on a particular thing that they particularly that they that they really need help with or they are asking questions about on your means by which you're interacting with them, whether that be social media, whether that be Twitter, whether that be Instagram, whatever it is. What that means is that you can understand exactly what they want before creating it. And for me, that's the easiest way. Still in 2022, there's so many infinite niches out there waiting to be filled on the internet. You know, what about a group specifically for dentists who, I don't know, they're really into restaurants, they're really into dining, they're really into holidays, they're really into trips to specifically Japan, specifically America. I don't know, there's, there's, thousands of things there's going to be a niche out there somewhere uh there's going to be a niche out there somewhere those examples that i came up off the top of my head are probably not going to be uh <laughs> very good but i'm sure if you spent some time and thought about it you can find a niche and as soon as you get the attention then you can think about how you can create a business around that and think about it think about your hobby think about your passion what if you're into reading why not a dentist book club i really think that has legs I, I haven't seen any dental book clubs. And you know what, even if someone has created something before you, there's always space to execute it better than them. More content, more traffic, more engaging, make the page more exciting, make the group more exciting. Totally possible. It, just because there's one doesn't mean there, can be an, there can't be another. Here's how most people see business. Just like I say, create the product first, then get the traffic. It's actually easier to get the traffic first, then create a product. Think of it that way around. Totally possible. And then what that means is that you can begin shifting your focus on overly thinking about what sort of product that you can create uh, analysis paralysis, in my opinion, particularly when you don't even really know what those people, what people want in the first place is always going to be a guess unless you've thoroughly done your market research. For me, it's easier to go out and figure it's easier to go and get the attention first of all and then think about what you can create to help those people. But here's the thing, you might have a vague idea of what you want to create. You might have a vague idea of what you're passionate about. And that will, of course, be your, your following on social media. So you can have dental book club, you can have dental health club, you can have dental fitness club. But within that, your speciality is strength training in the fitness club, your speciality is marathon running, something like that. But the first means of communication the first place that those people will interact will be something that is more appealing to a broader group of people, but then you can have a speciality within that. And then you might think to yourself, actually, now that this has hit a certain size, I can now offer these people something based around my specific area of expertise, which relates to the fact that all these people in this group are here because they want to learn about their fitness or dental book club. You might be really into Shakespeare specifically. But you'll learn through creating the group, you'll learn through creating the profile or the presence um, from other people because there'll be other experts about other things on there and see, see creating a following as your journey, part of your journey to becoming the expert rather than you flaunt, rather than you going out there and flaunting yourself as being the expert from the get go. I would actually see it the other way around, see that as part of your journey to learning because you won't believe the number of people out there. They will gravitate towards you who have a lot of knowledge on particular subjects and will teach you stuff along the way. And you don't have to pretend to be the expert. You don't have to say that you know everything about a particular subject. You just have to say, you just market yourself as somebody who's into it, you know, and then you'll become the expert by default if you spend enough time interacting with your community. So for me, simplest way in 2022, 
infinite niches out there waiting to be filled. There's so many opportunities for things that for people that are interested in the particular in particular hobbies and pastimes, but then relate them to say dentists or doctors or whatever your profession is in a unique way that only they can. That's where the attention comes from. It's the means to speak to those people who are not catered for anywhere else on the internet. And that's going to be the first place that most people will be able to get a side business off the ground realistically. <coughs> Excuse me. So invest in yourself to create value first. Never wonder why other people don't want or not interested in your in a product that you've created. Think to yourself, how can I make the product more valuable first? Then that make it make it so valuable that you personally think it's a no brainer that someone wants your product, and then that way you'll be able to give it everything you've got and throw your full weight behind it. Create a network of people. Still in 2022, I'm convinced for the reasons that I've said earlier that there's an infinite number of niches out there waiting to be filled in dentistry and outside of dentistry, both those realms. Create something valuable for those people and chances are that you can create a business from this. Now, that is a really high level overview of how we should be looking at creating a side business. Those are the overall steps to begin in. Within those steps, there's a lot of skill sets. There's a lot of things that we need to discuss in further detail for people to be able to action those um, to a high level. But what's the quickest way, you know, even before we get on to action in them to a high level, what's the quickest way to actually learn how to undertake those things? Or what's the quickest way to actually learn how to use this knowledge It's probably just by going out there and just experimenting and doing it yourself, or getting some sort of mentor, or someone who will help you someone who's been through it before. But I'm a big fan of just going out, executing. That's the greatest data that you can ever get. Uh, and then as well as that, we really have to let go of the fact that we take failure so personally as human beings. Failure is just failure is just a point of learning. Failure is just another step on the path to success. And you can fail a hundred times, but be successful once and you only need that one time to come through for special stuff to happen that should be the mindset see them as learning points instead of inverted common inverted commas failure cool cheers for that i'll see you all next week a lot of fun to present that one something really close to my heart i think every dentist should have a side business or something to supplement their income those are the very high level steps how hope everybody find that really useful feel free to drop any uh, feedback in the comments any questions and feel free to message me should anybody want to know any more information or more stuff in detail. Thank you so much.